know our relationship with our children is forever and precious, we begin to feel the separation. We begin to feel the independence. It's gradual. Um, they don't need us as much, our teenagers. And they might not share as much with us. And then they want to be with their friends more than us. Has anyone experienced that yet? Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard as a parent. You're, you were your universe for your small children and you did so much together. And now it's, now your kids prefer the company of their peers and it's painful for parents. And we might withdraw and not realize that actually our relationship to them is really important. It's different. Please don't lose sight of that. Your relationship to your teenagers, it is important to your teens. Need to say that. And for the sake of diversity, I also have to acknowledge that some parents love that their kids are becoming more independent because they have also put off things in their life and they would like to be less involved with their kids. So that's great too. Um, but the process of independence and separation is so important the, the basic questions of life, who am I outside of my parents? Who am I outside of their expectations and values? Who am I outside of a family identity? What is my experience in the world alone? So important. Um, small things, independence happens throughout a life of a person. We watch our children cross the street by themselves. We watch them handle a relationship conflict. Um, and as children grow more into teenagers, um, they have more of a conflictual style that says basically, I am not you, I have a different viewpoint. And we need to value that perspective and not take it as a personal rejection of who we are. And for many parents, that's really tough. And we begin to grieve and that needs to be valued. And you, know, you feel it in small ways, like the middle school years, like uh, your kids don't wanna be seen with you. Maybe you have to bring them to school and drop them off like, you know, blocks away from the school or you're out on a family walk and they don't want to walk with you, but they're walking way behind you. You know, these are all signals of I am my own person and parents need support here, not from, from, from partners, from friends, um, from our own inner life that also can support the changing relationship. We are impacted by this too. And if our babies are growing up and yet our babies will always be our babies, I know in some way, yeah. Um, so many of us uh, might consider seeing conflict in the home as a way of uh, teenagers really finding their own path. And I need to say that for some kids where there is a really tight parental relationship, it's really hard to separate. Um, that you give them a certain kind of security in the world and they're more fearful actually. And with young people like that, it's important to help them have an experience of who you are inside of them, a body-based experience that you can say to that young person, you know, I am always with you. I'm always with you. Can you feel me? Can you feel me in your body? If I were to live somewhere in your body, where would that be? Help them have a physical sense of you so they know you're with them. Give them an object to carry that reminds them of you. Maybe it's a piece of jewelry, it's a stone, it's an object, a scarf, whatever it is, but give them a sense that you're with them all the time. Now, sometimes these kids who have a hard time with the separation because the relationship feels so good and loving and cozy, sometimes they actually will create conflict because it's easier to separate in conflict. And in those situations, you might wanna to say to those kids, you know, we've always been so close and I want you to know that even though we're having such conflict now, I want you to know I'm always here loving you no matter what.
that you give them that message. Now, another dynamic here that happens is that we need to support both independence and need for our teens. Some parents polarize these qualities and then make it really hard for the teenager to express need. For example, the, the teen is definitely more into their independence and their power. And, um, and we see our kids becoming independent and we might feel unneeded and we might feel a little hurt even though we might not say it, we might feel that way. And then when our kid has some kind of a need, we might make a comment like, oh, now you need us, or now you want me for something. That doesn't land well. That makes your child feel like they shouldn't need you and that they shouldn't ask for help. They will experience that as a humiliation and they will compensate by then having to do everything for themselves. And they don't wanna show you any need after that. They'll feel it's a kind of a weakness. Yeah, so appreciate, yes, I'm happy you need me. And yes, you're independent. Both are really important at this age. Is that clear to folks? Anyone have a, a thought about that? Do you notice that? It's a big thing with teenagers and parents polarize it too much, value both. Okay, I wanna talk about privacy because it's a huge issue that comes up at this age, especially. Um, it's hard for many of us as parents to, ex to respect the privacy needs of our growing children. Um, their need to have their own inner worlds, their own fantasy, to close the door, to not wanna be touched or cuddled. Uh, it's a big thing for them to do that. And as kids get older and they have more independence and they have more experience that is beyond our purview, parents also get worried. We feel we're less connected to their lives. We feel we don't know what they're doing. Um, we have all kinds of fantasies that they're up to troubles or some kind of problems. And many of us as a result, um, are compelled to go into phones and social media accounts to check on what our kids are doing. Or we might just miss them and notice that our teen is not sharing as much as they used to. So I am all about cultivating the teenage relationship. Everything that I am sharing with you, that is the fundamental thing. I'm, convinced that this is the way that we get on with our teens. So in dealing with privacy, we need to talk about this relationally. We need to share our feelings. Geez, I'm aware our relationship is changing. I feel it's different than when you were little. I loved how you would tell me every little thing when you were a young person. And now you're experiencing yourself outside of me. You have your own life, your own experiences, your own relationships, and tell them, I value that in you. I value that you have that. It's great. And I also grieve a little bit that I don't know as much. Now, the important thing here is that you're sharing two viewpoints. And this is really, really important. Um, most of us grow up and most of us in our world feel like we only can have one view. And relationship is full of complexity and nuance and different viewpoints. So for you to be able to model as a parent that you can say, you know, I have two views. Yes, you're, you have your own inner world, you have your own privacy, you have your own life experiences, yes. And, oh, I wish I knew more. I'm also grieving that. And of course, you need to do that. And I'm here and I would love to hear whatever you wanna share. You see, you're bringing the two views at once. You're valuing the independence, but you're also showing the impact on you. That's a life skill. It's a life skill in your, as the growing teen to be able to express a couple of viewpoints 
and able to receive different viewpoints. So then your kid will come to me like mine did one day and said, yeah, you know, mom, I know it's hard on you that I don't share as much as I used to, but just know I'm doing okay and I love you. That's the holding both views. And I, I like that I'm seen also as someone uh, who is grappling with the relationship. It changes for us too, and we need to share that experience, yeah. However, the other side of privacy is if you're worried that something more dangerous is going on, you have to talk about that. Acknowledge the need for privacy, um, but also talk about the kinds of things that you would want to know about. And say, I am older. I do have more experience in the world than you do. It's just true. And there are some things I'm nervous about. And have a discussion. And I want to encourage you to ask the following things. This is before anything. Ask them, what kinds of things do you think could be dangerous and where you might need parental assistance? It's just a conversation. Ask your child that. Where might you need parental assistance? What things could be dangerous? Ask them the kinds of things they feel able to handle themselves, things they can do alone. Ask them if and why they wouldn't trust you to share certain things. That's really important. Is there something you wouldn't trust me with? What kinds of stuff and why? Why ask them, why wouldn't you share with me? These are such important conversations to have because you'll also be able to track your teenager and see and evaluate together with them the kinds of situations where they do need help, where they would approach you. For example, and then share with them the kinds of things that you would want them to share things that you want to be involved in. For example, this is a really typical situation. I've seen it a lot in my practice where many teens keep private knowledge that a friend is self-harming or suicidal. They keep it private. They keep it private because they've promised the friend that they wouldn't say anything. So they suffer this inside. What a burden. They've promised to their friend but they're also really nervous about it. They are, they're in a very tough bind. And then imagine if that friend does attempt suicide, the feelings of regret, the feelings of, or, of guilt or overwhelming can, can have a huge life impact. So talk to your teen. This would be a, a situation I would talk to a teenager about. Let's say one of your friends that they promised you around self-harm or suicide. How would you handle that? I would like to be involved, talk about why, but talk to them about how together you would find solutions, how you would respect the secret by first empowering them to talk to the friend. They can talk to the friend first. They can say, hey, I'm worried about you. I want you to get help. I'm trying to help you as your friend, but I don't think I, don't think I can actually. I think you should tell your parents, or should we go to the school counselor? Empower your teen first to do that. And if they can't, talk first about how you would want to intervene. Talk about solutions together and tell them what you would do before you would do it. That's really important for the trust in your relationship with them. Oh.